electric actuator here. This is the diagram. We have DF here, <coughs> and we have blocking force, which I'm just going to call FB. I said that for the for the single piezoelectric material, voltage times the piezoelectric D coefficient is the free displacement, which is going to be here, right? So uh, if we have that piezoelectric material, and then we put another ma and we put a mass on top of it, let's say that that block that uh, force that free displacement is not going to be less, right? Because you put a force on it. Therefore, when it wants to expand, it's not going to expand to the exact same position. So we're going to have a reduced free displacement once you put that mass on there. But however, there is now a force resulting from mass times gravity, or perhaps you can just choose any other type of way to put a force on a material. You know, either just a spring, or there's some type of pushing force, or you're pushing on it with your hand, or you're pushing on it with something else another actuator maybe so there's an, there's actually a force that was developed in this material because of that blocking force so there's actually a, a stress in the material see when you have d e in the strain here there's stress either we call stress capital x or we can call stress t or sometimes they call stress sigma the stress is zero because the piezoelectric material is under a non-stress condition there's no external <coughs> pushing forces so basically by applying this electric field you change the natural state of the piezoelectric material um, wanting it to go to a free stress condition so we're not applying any external stresses um, the piezoelectric material expands to that non-stress state. However, that now that you have put this uh, big mass on there or a certain force on there, there is an actual uh, force which is applied. So we have to we're going to move up this curve here. And what do you know? If you keep going up this curve, you put a heavier mass, it's going to end up here. We're going to have less displacement but more force. Uh, less displacement, more force until we 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 put so much mass on the material or so much force on the material that the free displacement is zero. So what happens at this point? The free displacement is zero. And I'm going to use an exaggerated view. So let's say we had, initially we had our piezoelectric material as two of these blocks here. This is just written for size and you know, polarization like that. And we have our mass here. So we didn't put our mass on there yet. This is a really heavy mass, mass times g. <coughs> Once we put our the mass on there, Let's see our piezoelectric material gets to half the size. This is not true. It does not even remotely true. But we put that mass on there, and therefore the piezoelectric material, it, you know, it, it got, it's under compression, so it develops some compression type of uh, stresses, and it develops a negative strain. And then we apply an electric field on the material. So we apply an electric field. Let's say here, positive. Oh, well, actually, it would be positive, negative here. Therefore, we would expand the material because the electric field is perpendicular, uh, parallel to the polarization direction, and then that mass gets uh, gets gets back here. Now, uh, for a certain, uh, you know, for a certain, for a certain applied electric field, and let's draw that curve again because we tried to change the slide. This is DF. <coughs> sorry, D little f, uh, free displacement, and this is FD, uh, FB. Sorry, <coughs> blocking force. For a certain free displacement, which is known as VD, and that's the free displacement, there's going to be a characteristic blocking force which exists. So. And the other way we can think about it here here we thought about it that we put the mass after so we had this non stress state and then we put this mass and it became smaller and then we put an electric field and again to its original size a sort of a nicer way to look at it is this that we started like this we started with this big mass on here okay and this mass is mg and this mass is actually the force applied. So let's assume that for a certain blocking force, let's say FB equals a certain mg, I'll say m1g, what's the free displacement? And that free displacement would be 
would be related to that electric field which needs to be applied to raise it back to its original position which was two blocks this would be the blocking force and this would be the electric field which you <coughs> would need to apply and obviously if you apply the electric field normally you would get a really big you would get a larger free displacement so here is the free displacement here so now the question is given the mass which is put on which is basically a force mass times gravity given this mass uh, and assuming that is the blocking force which it's going to be if you're going to be using this mass what is the free displacement so in order to do this we need to go to the P of electric constitutive equation which says that stress is equal to uh, we're just going to use these notations here and uh, we have a stress applied which I'm going to call T. T is a nice word place for stress so and we're going we're gonna to add our D times E and this is all 3 3 and this is electric fields by the 3 direction stress is 3 3 okay I usually leave those out when it's obvious so we want a strain of 0 okay and let's say the cross-sectional area of this is A. So we have our piezoelectric material looking like this. And let's say this is the, this is the cross-sectional area A. This is the length L, which we've always been using. L is as long as L. Okay, so what is the stress now? The stress is the mass times gravity, or let's just call it the blocking force. It's the blocking force divided by area so s33 e force blocking force divided by area and uh, now we have our electric field here plus d33 e and we said the strain is zero if that case is where the strain is zero okay because the blocking force at this point we're saying it's equal to the applied electric field when the applied electric field has to be what? It has to be in voltage terms because we're talking about this on a macroscopic level, which is equally applicable to uh, piezoelectric electric actuators and single uh, plates and <coughs> multi-layer systems too. So we're gonna actually going to have a voltage divided by the length here. And this is a force divided by area. And now we have zero as the strain because we said how much electric field would it take to get back to the original position and that uh, is the blocking force and that is also uh, the voltage which correspond to the free displacement so what voltage would it take to uh, create this blocking force so what is the relationship between voltage and blocking force that's basically what we're asking so blocking force is going to be equal to D three three and I'm ignoring signs here because uh, it's actually a negative force since it's compressive and then it goes on the other side it becomes positive whatever um, <clears throat> so this is a on the bottom so this one this one went across and I went back up top a and when this one over this has to go under so here you have it. Here you have uh, the calculation for the blocking force <coughs> of a piezoelectric material. Here are all the geometry and the material properties and all organized nicely. So this is the blocking force of the piezoelectric material. Which I just calculated. If it's wrong, then you could probably count my mistake. So you notice the blocking force depends on voltage. Okay, so what is the corresponding now free displacement according to this blocking force? So what's the DF? So we're going to have to remember this terminology. It's uh, D D S D V A S L. Okay, D V A 
SL. I'm just going to leave it these simple terms. This is equal to the blocking force. <clears throat> so the free displacement, again, was equal to voltage times D. So let's make this easier for us. Um, FB SL D A equals the voltage. For a certain voltage, this is uh, this is this is all true. So therefore, we put this in here. We get a relationship between the blocking force. So we get a relationship between the blocking force and the applied electric field. So this cancels out. So we're left with the blocking force DF is equal to FB SL. So you'll notice a couple of things here. Uh, one of the things you'll notice is that the relationship between the blocking force and uh, the free displacement is not dependent on the piezoelectric D coefficient, which you may feel that, okay, so where does all this piezoelectricness go? You know, this could be, <coughs> might as well not be piezoelectric at all. And uh, this equation is not really governed by piezoelectricity uh, as much as you would think. But let's take a look here and see what's really going on with this curve. So I know I mentioned that we have this curve. Here we have DF, and here we have FB, blocking force. So for a given voltage applied, let's say this is voltage 1, voltage equals 1. You can have a certain free displacement, and the free displacement was again equal to um, the VD. And you can have a certain blocking force, which the blocking force was equal to if I can read my handwriting, V uh, F4, uh, no, sorry, DVA divided by SL, <coughs> and this is a E. So this is the so for a certain voltage. But if you increase your voltage, you increase your blocking force uh, applied force ratio. So basically, if you double your voltage, you will double the amount of uh, displacement you could get if you let the actuator completely free. And you also double the force you could get if you completely constrained uh, the force, <coughs> or rather, sorry, completely constra <coughs> constrained the material. You could also think of blocking force like this. You had a, you have your piezoelectric actuator, and you have like a really big wall above it. For a certain force, for a certain electric field you you apply, this is a really big wall. It's not going to move at all. So for for a certain voltage difference, potential difference you apply, there's a certain uh you know there's a generated force or generated stress in the material due to that electric field. Uh, therefore, due to that generated stress, you develop this um blocking. You, you develop a stress, and that stress is indicative of blocking force itself as well. Uh, so basically, by moving, uh, by increasing the voltage, you can move to a new line here. By increasing the voltage further, you travel further down this way. But if you have your voltage constrained, uh, you can you have to travel along this line. Depending on the load and the force you have on your on your material <coughs> for the and, and that certain voltage, you will either be on some point on this line. Okay. So if you apply a very large, uh, if you have a very light force on your material. Like you, let's say you put your you have your piezoelectric material and you you have a feather on top of it. Obviously, the feather has some finite weight. It's going to constrain the motion of the piezoelectric material a little bit. It's a feather. It has an inf has a finite weight. So it'll be like right there. Let's say if you have something larger, it'll be right here. And if you have something even larger, it'll be right there. And if you have an extremely heavy mass or something, uh, well, you'll might, you'll end up on this side actually. But if let's say you completely constrained your piezoelectric material, it won't even move. Uh, it will just produce a force, like in this case. Uh, this big wall or big mass is not moving anywhere. Uh, it's going to be there. So depending on the force you have on your piezoelectric material, you can think about it as a mass on your piezoelectric material, you will move along this curve here. 
And let's say if you applied a really big mask, 